I'm Matt Greenberg. I'm the chair of the corporate group at Troutman Pepper, where I focus my practice in private equity. Today, I'm joined by Jeremy Levy, who also practices with me in the, in the private equity practice at Troutman. And today, we're here to discuss different perspectives and the outlook for 2023. So Jeremy, welcome. Let's discuss what went on in the market in 2022. Thanks, Matt. Happy to be here. Um, so obviously, 2022, uh, lots of economic factors at play. Everyone's familiar with. There's the ongoing war in Ukraine, supply chain issues, uh, you know that that are that are still lingering from COVID. Um, as a result, inflation, uh, you know, is is taking off. The Fed begins its program to try and to try and combat inflation. As a result, we get interest rates increasing. You know, on a on a monthly basis, um, you know, with every with every meeting that that the Fed has, um, and so we we're we're in a world in 2022 with a lot of uncertainty, and that's sort of the theme for 2022. And it's really we're going to talk about it a lot today. It's going to sort of drive the situation for in the market for for 2023 as well. Um, and so 2022. First half of the year went sort of slowly. Um, everyone took a, te- a deep breath from 21. Second half of 2022 ended off pretty pretty normal, you know, end of the year kind of market. Q4 was pretty busy. Um, you had a lot of deals. I had a lot of deals. Lots of people were doing deals. Um, so it was a down year off 2021. Um, but I'm interested in your thoughts on this as well because I have a lot of conversations with people about it. Was 22 really a down year or was it just down from 21? What are your thoughts on that? Agreed. I mean, I think that 2022 was slightly down, but again, you're measuring it off of the industry's highest year ever. Mm -hmm. And so it was still a solid year. We got a lot of deals done. We saw a lot of deals still get done, maybe with a slightly different uh, pace. But I think that uh, overall, the market ends up still being pretty strong. Mm -hmm. So then we turn to 23. Uh, you know, we're a month and a half in, uh, you know, January was basically de- basically just doing deals that didn't get done at the end of 2022. Everyone was sort of, there wasn't the same sort of pending tax change or other sort of external force that drove us to have to complete deals in 2022. And so you begin 23, we complete the deals that, that are on our plate from prior, from the end of last year. And then what are we left with? Um, volume is down. But what are you seeing with what we're left with? Yeah, I mean, th- th- there's some good things that are happening, too. I mean, we're seeing it looks like inflation is starting to get regulated. Uh, we're seeing the interest rate hike slow down and hopefully stop. And and we know that there's a lot of dry powder out there and, and, and funds that want to get deals done. So we think that I think that it's going to be a pretty good year and continue to improve as the year goes on. Yeah, I think so. I think that what, what's interesting is that deals are getting done. Um, volume is clearly down, but deals are definitely getting done. They're just getting done a little bit differently. Um, the private equity investment professionals that I'm talking to, clients of ours, bankers and so forth, it's, we've seen a shift in the type, type of deals. Um, there are few, fewer auctions that are, that are being kicked off. There are fewer auctions out there. Um, and I think that comes down to the uncertainty that you referenced, right? You've got these, with all the rising interest rates over last year, um, you know the rising cost cost of debt. Um, you know that created that that instilled a lot of uncertainty into the marketplace, and that I think drove more busted deals in 2022 than I've ever seen in my career. I think that now at the beginning of 23, we've got a lot of sellers who are just afraid of a busted auction. Right, a busted auction is bad for a variety of reasons. It can have a lasting impact on on valuation, even if even you know on a subsequent auction. So it feels like while 2022, there were companies that were sort of testing the market and failing. Now it feels very much like no one's really willing to test the market. You've got strong companies that are you know, good assets that are still coming to market and doing so with confidence. But I'm seeing far fewer auctions um, you know, being kicked off. Bankers are not sending out as many teasers. It just feels like deals have shifted. You're seeing Similar I, things. I agree. I, the way that it really changed was you saw not just auction processes, but you know, back in 
the year, beginning of last year, you saw a lot of deals where people were trying to preempt the auction process. Mm -hmm. And then it became a slower auction process and deals getting broken. And so now you're in a position where it's, you're seeing a lot of proprietary deals, you're seeing companies really thinking about whether or not they're going to market. But if they do, they're looking for things like you said of certainty, can I get this deal done? I do I want to deal with any potential disruption? Mm -hmm. um, so, but I think that there's a lot of dry powder out there. There's a lot of great companies and a lot of great private equity firms that are looking to do smart things. Mm -hmm. And so I think you still see a lot of people in the marketplace. <music>